We're gonna see how long this engine will run without a wheel in it. This is a Mark III Jetta with a two liter ABA engine. This is debatably the most reliable Volkswagen engine ever. We know that oil is the lifeblood of the engine, but what happens if you run the engine with no oil in it? We're about to show you a 2.0 TSI engine that came out of a car that was run on oil, and it sounded like this. That sounds so bad. So basically the people that let these things blow up, run it and hear that all day and like, this is fine. This didn't just start like that. It didn't just like one day you woke up and you started up and it's just like <laughs> Engines have pistons and connecting rods moving up and down in each cylinder. When we flip the engine over, oh geez, you can see the connecting rod attached to the crankshaft like this and looks like that. These are the connecting rod bearings. They are just thin pieces of metal and they go around the crankshaft right here. Engine oil is pumped between the journal of the crankshaft and the bearing. This creates a thin film of oil that the bearings actually ride on, something like this. Uh, uh, uh. Without the oil in your engine, you have metal touching metal, spinning thousands of revolutions per minute. Common failure when you run your car low on oil or poorly maintain it is known as a spun bearing. When this happens, the bearings will wear to the point where they come dislodged and spin on top of each other. And this is what a spun bearing looks like. Now, this bearing is not really all that good either, but this spun bearing is absolutely toast. And this one was actually missing the second piece of the bearing. So Paul, what, what is the point of this exercise to begin with? Well, the goal with this is to simulate real world experiences if you didn't change your oil often enough, if you let your car run low on oil, or if you hit something in the road and ignored that red genie lamp on your dashboard. Ooh. Can't leak oil from your oil pressure sensor if you don't have any oil in the car. We're taking the hood off so that you can see the engine blow up better. So what are the possible things that can go wrong with this engine? Engine locks up. Bearing could spin as we showed before. Or it just keeps running forever and we have created a perpetual motion machine. It is going and going. Breaking the space-time continuum into the multiverse. Moment of truth. We're gonna start her up and see how she does. I think everybody thought it was gonna blow up right away. I knew it wasn't gonna blow up right away. So what I want to do is give it the appropriate amount of time to run with no oil in it for maybe like an hour before we start to like really rev it and try to make it die. At about four minutes, it's getting a little bit loud. That's barely, that's barely a rod knock at all. It is everything taking every ounce of my soul not to just get in and... I know, wow! <laughs> Something that you may not be familiar with that because we're old, we're a little more familiar <laughs> with is cash for clunkers. Cash for clunkers. Was a thing that happened back in the day in the like 2009 area where they were trying to stimulate the economy and they were trying to get rid of cars that yep. had high fuel consumption. So what we would do is we had this solution that you'd have to pour into the crankcase and it would lock up the engine, it'd like solidify the oil or whatever. And some, instant, some, a long time. Until it ran out of fuel. 276,000 miles and uh, this is gonna be its last mile driven <laughs> was the miles to come to this place. Here's the better question. Will Paul actually let this idle for a half an hour? Does he have the self-control to not just eat that gas pedal? I'm finding it difficult right it's now. It's so hard. 1227 is when this started. Right now it's 1240. So we got our magic genie and our Moana light, and we're almost out of gas. Are we gonna run out of gas before we run out of engine? I hope so. That'd be really, <laughs> that'd be a real bummer. I'm gonna go for a ride just to see how this baby handles. With Twelve forty-eight. We're currently at twenty minutes, and I'm getting impatient. It's also beeping a lot. It doesn't like what's happening right now.
You done did it, Johnny. <laughs> Our engine ran for around 20 or so minutes at idle. At that point, we decided that was not going to do it. So, AKA, we were too excited to blow up the engine. We wanted to blow up the engine, is really what it was. So, 5,000 RPM is where roughly where I kept it at for roughly around five minutes, and then it went kaput. Yep. It was a lot of smoke, a lot of smoke, and then stop. We have the engine out, we removed it, and we're gonna tear it down now to see what's inside. Also, had we not revved that to five grand, I feel like this car would have ran till it ran out of gas. For a long time, yeah. I expect, uh, again, as mentioned, ABAs. They're bulletproof. Bop, 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 bop. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take stuff apart. Just do it. I'm ready to send Ain't it. Nothing to it. This is something you would do if you're checking an engine. So this is the crankshaft. And as you can see, Paul's lifting the whole thing up here. Uh, this engine is currently locked up. Locked up. Like Akon. It won't let, they won't let it out. What do you say to the people that are mad that we blew this engine up? Um, I mean, it's a 300,000 mile ABA engine that's worth uh, about a half eaten bag of gummy bears. If, if you really want to find an ABA engine, they're basically worthless. Anybody could have one for you. And if you're watching this like 20 years in the future and ABAs have become like the holy grail of VW engines or just all engines in general because everything's electric and you can't get gas cars. You really want an electric, uh, a gas car and say ABA is what the best thing is. Sorry. You Bro, it? look at Look at that. Barely. It's completely fine. It looks better than that TSI we took apart <laughs> just a few minutes ago. So not only did this run for 25 minutes with no oil, yeah. this also has almost 300,000 miles on it. Oh my God. Is that holding it on right there? No, that's just a bracket. Ooh, he literally almost <laughs> yeeted it at Nathan. He literally almost yeeted it right You said grabbing like a, a TSI with the turbo and everything yeah. on it. This weighs like four pounds. No, no damage, no. No damage, no nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing interesting at all. Oh, uh, I think I see what the problem is though. So. <laughs> doing, 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 doing. They're all they're all very similar. Look in, at this one and look at this one. In height, they, they seem to not, be very- This is not even close. These are companion cylinders, one and four. So what that means is that they should be exactly the same height. So if we look, I'm gonna show you, this is how far my fist is down there. And that's how far my fist is down there. Which means there's a broken rod underneath there. Moment of truth. Oh, there's oil in there. Look at all that oil in there. That is so much oil. So when people are worried about that 100 milliliters of oil left over after using an extractor, don't. Don't, because your engine will run. But that's a lot of oil after draining the oil. Oh, geez. Balls. Well, this would make how many messes we've made? All the messes. There we go. Oop, that was a piece of an engine that uh, fell out. Oh, Piscadios. Well, we haven't gotten very far, but the first thing we see is- Is that a uh, Connecting rod cap. Oh. I think that's, that's a, a main big, cap. That's, that's a big boy. That's a real neat main cap. Wow, look at how dark Ooh, look it is. Look at how mushed it is too. It's not, that used to be round. Launched. Three, two, one. Oh, look at that. There's a little bit of metal in there. Glorious. As you can imagine. Okay, this. Is a bolt in there? That's the other part of that? What is that? That's a rod. Look at how black it is, like it caught on fire. Oh, there it is. Oh my. Oh, there it is. Oh my. That is delightful. Let's take this oil puff off so we can get it. Yes. It's, uh, 13. Look at that. It's the shaft, shaft broke. broke. I wonder if that's the piece of whatever that thing was that we found earlier. The stud? Oh no, it's just, it's straight broken off the diff, the distributor. Because the oil pump's driven on the distributor on this oh, car. Oh, the gear? Yeah. It just got too hot? So, so this is probably what happened. This seized, broke. And then, and it, then, then no it starved oil. everything else. So he just bent this up and you can see it did spin a bearing. So he pulled the cap off and he pulled that up and the bearing should be evenly spaced right here, but this is one of the seams and the other is the other seam. So, this at least spun around that way. So one broken ro rod, one spun there bearing. Oh uh, yeah, boy. He's stuck on the edge. There's the other Woo! bearing. Woo! Smoked. Dang! That's pretty cool. Okay, yeah. Okay. That's, this is, seems like all kinds of bad ideas. 
Why don't I, you just wiggle it up? Can you not do that? <laughs> <laughs> We're going really smarter. That's our, that's our motto. I'm sure I'm afraid to get hit in the face with this hammer. <laughs> Both if I go down to get that piston and if I stay where I was. <laughs> so much carnage. So much chaos. Carnage is awesome. <laughs> Paul E.D., I think our distributor shaft broke. What? This car has a distributor, whatever that thing is. We have gotten to the point where we can disassemble. We're going to take all these main caps off and then inspect them together. When we look at our main bearings, you can see, just like all the other stuff, it's severely overheated. Uh, this one's a really nice one because it's got a nice bluing to it right there. And all of them really have similar signs of wear, which is unsurprising. There we go. Oh, we need that like, you need, you need to just cut like right there. Okay, okay, okay. It's like two monkeys in a football. Dang, son. All right. Hey, this has oil squirters? Well, they sure didn't do their job. Oh, yeah. Look at this bad boy. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, me doggy. <laughs> it just got folded <laughs> over. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at that. Skirt's the busted. The piston skirt is busted. The this is really the culprit here. Guys, like, it looks like you should talk like meh, 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 meh. What did it to me? His, his money don't jiggle jiggle. <laughs> it folded. It folds. <laughs> yeah. This one got a little, a little warm. This is the whole reason we made this video, to get to this point. Is it too much work? Absolutely. Are we dumb? Absolutely. Uh, here we go. Here is the broken connecting rod here. It's kind of more than broken. It's more like it like mushed. So this is the complete uh, connecting rod itself. Good. Not good. Good. Not good. What do we find out at the end of our video after we disassembled an engine that we blew up from running with no oil? It turns out that you should have oil in your engine to make it more better. Uh, otherwise, if you don't, or you're a bad oil changer, your car engine's gonna do that. Now we drained all of the oil out of this engine. It doesn't take a completely oil-free engine to cause severe engine damage. So even half capacity is going to cause premature engine wear and that's exactly what I was going to say. Premature <laughs> engine wear and frictionless Fa failure surfaces failure. You done did it, Johnny? We've officially done it. Looks great. Oh wait, look at that smoke coming out of the dipstick hole. <laughs> wow. Oh, that stinks.